Welcome to a, an afternoon special talk here at the Department of Sociology and Anthropology. Uh, my name is Alfred Pavlik, in case you, you don't know me, so I'll have the pleasure and the privilege to introduce to you our speaker for today. I hope you can hear me. All right. And it is no less than Olga Wanitska from the University of Warsaw, our guest uh, here at the Department of Sociology and Anthropology for several weeks now doing her research. And the title of her talk today is quite interesting, Playing to Get a Job, Philippine Basketball League in Poland as a site of informal labor brokerage. Now, Olga is a PhD candidate in sociology at the Doctoral School of Social Sciences at the University of Warsaw, the Faculty of Applied Social Sciences and Resocialization. And previously, she obtained a master's degree in criminology at the University of Warsaw and a bachelor's degree in ethnology and cultural anthropology at the University of Wrocław. Currently, she works as a key investigator of the project Poland's Inclusion to the Global Network of Job Placement, the case of overseas Filipino workers. This is supported by the National Science Center of Poland, and she tries to examine new cross-border overseas Filipino workers' migration networks in the context of Poland's inclusion in the global circulation of employment services, and the changing role and nature of contemporary transnational recruitment agencies. Her new additional areas are the new forms of informal brokerage on social media platforms such as YouTube and Facebook and sport events. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to call on Olga to present her interesting talk to our audience here and online. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for such a warm welcome and for the possibility to present some of the, of the findings. So as you heard already, as, as was already mentioned, uh, for more than three years, I'm in, uh, in, in my main scientific work, I'm focused on a different dimension of a labor, labor brokerage. Uh, and uh, particularly, I'm most focused on the Filipino migration to Poland. And about one of it, about one of this, about about one of this uh, dimension, I will tell you today a bit more. And I will try to use it. I hope it works. Yeah. So I would like to start here by giving you some background of the people I'm searching with and the use methods. So this will later allow me to explain why I have decided to tell you today about the basketball. Uh, the research is ongoing. So far, I have conducted more than 40 interviews with different actors engaged in the migration infrastructure of Filipino migrant workers to Poland. Uh, luckily, during my stay in the Philippines, short stay, I have already also conducted uh, more than six interviews with uh, different actors of migration infrastructure. So, for example, um, scholars, but also, also journalists, uh, workers of NGOs and uh, employers. Uh, the research is ongoing. So, so far, if we are thinking about the, my main target group, I, uh, I have conducted 33 uh, semi-structured narrative interviews with OFWs in Poland. Uh, and you can also see here uh, who are these people. So there are usually, uh, there are 10 women, 24 men, 23 men. Uh, so there's a surplus of men so far from the age of 24 to 59 who came to Poland between 2010 to 2018, but only three participants. And after 2018, there is more than 30 participants so far. Uh, what is interesting here, and I think maybe this is also saying, this also says something about the labor migration of Filipino migrant workers to Poland, there are the jobs taken by Filipinos. So as you can see, it's very difficult here to distinguish a particular, I don't know, sector or dimension we are focused on. 
there are all of the professions mentioned by my interlocutors here on the slide. Uh, what is more? In addition to interviews, I also using other methods. Uh, so for example, so far, I also analyze the statistics, statistical data, which I obtained usually from the uh, Ministry of Family, Labor and Social Policy. And about this data, I will tell you a bit more in a second. I'm also observing the Philippine Embassy official data, but also YouTube channels. When I'm for more than a year, I was focusing uh, on, on YouTube channels provided and uh, current by the Filipino vloggers in Poland. Uh, and I was observing the videos, the comments. I even conduct the uh, social analysis about this. I'm also follow following all of the Facebook Filipino migrants in Poland's Facebook groups. And there I'm also observing the comments and posts. What is more, uh, I'm conducting the participant observation. So here you can see all of the places I have attended so far, or for example, I was participating also. Uh, and as you can see, there is a Pinoy Warsaw Basketball League, and I was attending in more than five events of this league. And uh, this is quite important. And when I realized this, I also realized that probably I should focus more about this particular event. So uh, I would like to stop here for a moment and tell you also the, the story, how it happened. So I went to the first Filipino basketball, Pino Warsaw Basketball League, uh, which was held in Warsaw in 2022. And I went there because I wanted to interview one of the players. There was a person who was recommended to me by the other uh, person. On the second meeting, I just went out of curiosity. And after the second meeting, I also look at my field notes and I discovered that the Basketball League in Warsaw is a space not only for playing, watching a game or meeting friends, but also this is, but it's also the space for various social interactions and various social intermediations. So I realized that the business cards, photos, notes, which I got came mostly from sponsors, brokers and potential employers. I also realized that among my interlocutors, I could also distinguish three PWB organizer, two commentators, one muse, two players, two additional sponsors, and even the one broker. So I understand that the Pinoy Warsaw Basketball appears as a new space for networking and intermediation of various actors. And I want to also mention, I, I want to uh, make it clear, uh, I didn't plan to address the importance of Basketball League for intermediation. I emphasize that what I'm presenting today is a work in progress based primarily on my observation. However, in the future, I would like to extend. It. So now I want to tell you briefly a bit about the theoretical background of my research on migration intermediation. So various brokers role has been studied for many long time and for many, many scholars, uh, brokers, intermediaries, middlemen, it doesn't really matter how you will call them play a huge role in migration process, although their role have both positive and negative overtones. The concept of migration infrastructure, which is a leading one for my research so far, is best exemplified by the statement that two social anthropologists, Biao Shang and Joan Linkfist, quoted after Bruno Latour. So they say, when we are thinking about the migration, we should consider that it's not the plane that flies, but the US Air Force and the whole structure behind it. So different dimension intersect, and we can distinguish, for example, the social one, uh, where uh, which shows how social networks serve migration, then the commercial one, which is mostly about the activities of official and unofficial intermediaries, the re regulatory one referring to the existing law and regulation on migration, the humanitarian is related to the activities of non-state actors, usually NGOs, NGOs are usually the most active in this area, and the technological one, the last one, is related to is associated with digitalized methods of migration control. But how sport and brokerage are connected. So there is quite a bit in the literature in the literature about how being an athlete allows one to emigrate, for example, due to obtaining the scholarship, engagement to the professional team, or participation in the Olympic Games. There is also quite a bit about the intermediation in sports in the context of acquiring sports players who 
who, for example, are granted citizenship of another countries when they want to support the national team. In the contrast, there is not much about sports as a space where different dimensions of migration infrastructure intersect and where informal brokering is becoming popular. Therefore, this is my goal. And I want to show that sport initiatives offer the new opportunities for job, net, for job placement and networking. And I also want to emphasize that I'm researching various ways of placement, of job, of job placement, and uh, that is what interests me most. But the Basketball League in Poland turned up a space for many more different interactions, and we try to show it now. So there are also social interactions, political interactions, economic one, etc. And I will show that there is much more going on there than just informal job place. So bringing you uh, closer the Filipino community in Poland, the Filipino community in Poland, it's not very, very big so far, but it's much bigger than a few years ago. And uh, various examples uh, include, for example, Facebook groups, YouTube channels, but also Filipino stores, restaurants, various community events like Buan Nawika, which, I organized, uh, which was organized, uh, was uh, held by the Filipino community in Warsaw during the last summer. Uh, the role of a religious community is very, very important for OWs in Poland, especially activities, for example, the Antonian Institute, which is uh, based in Warsaw. More initiatives, uh, businesses were also created since few years, initiatives called by the Filipino migrants. So we have already two Filipino stores and the place with the Filipino burgers is planned to be open uh, probably next year. Uh, what else? We can also say that there is much more new local Facebook groups outside of the municipalities. So for example, we can see here Pinot in Szczecin. When I started researching Filipino migrants in Poland, there was only the uh, Pino, Pinois in Poland or Filipino workers in Poland. But after three years, we have Filipinos, F Filipinos in, I don't know, Dzierżoniu, Zielona Góra, like totally different part of Poland. Uh, we have also different professions groups. So, for example, we have already the uh, Pinois Welders in Poland Facebook group, or for example, Pinois Contraction Worker uh, group on Facebook. And uh, also, the new initiatives has appear have appeared. So, for example, there is the Pinoy Warsaw Basketball League. I will tell you about it more today. So, the community is not very, very big, but nevertheless, it's quite uh, significant for. OFWs and it's also quite visible since few years more. So uh, the number of Filipinos in Poland has been growing rapidly in the last four years and the, the data are not completed, but they show the trend. So for example, every year I'm checking how many work permits were issued for Filipino migrant workers in Poland. Uh, and you know, there are just the data about the issue working permits. Probably also there's a potential risk that somebody already got a work permit and never appeared in Poland. But nevertheless, you can see the trend since 2015 until the first part of 2023. We are still lack of data for 2023, but as you can see, when I was thinking about the topic in 2018, there were more, a bit more than 2,000 work permits issued for Filipino migrant workers. In 2022, more than 22,500 work permits. And you can also see uh, how it looks according to the nationality. What else we can learn from the statistical data? So there are the professions which are usually undertaken by Filipino migrant workers in Poland. And uh, interestingly, there are no medical professions and no domestic works here, as you can see. There are also more Filipinos, 48.5% in the age of 35 to 44 than in general, which has probably something to do with the age discrimination within the Philippine labor market, which is not visible yet in Poland. If you are interested more about the age discrimination labor market, I can tell you more about it later. Uh, what else? For example, Filipinos in Poland before were mostly women, but nowadays with the new migration, the number of men and women is almost equal. So there are very, very small differences. So the first meeting with the Pinoy Warsaw Basketball League was held on October 8, 2022, as I was already said, and that time it was not a widely promoted event. The players played in three teams, they exchanging jerseys between themselves when they want to play in another team or 
against each other. Uh, many also were there without professional suits. Among supporters, there were mainly family members and friends. So for example, Phil, Venus, and few Poles. And about these few Poles, I will tell you a bit more later. During the breaks, snacks and hugs were exchanged and everyone sat together. The matches were referred by three Polish referees. And I asked them what they're thinking about the league and how do they feel. And they told me that they are very satisfied and they are contracted for another meetings already. And they are very impressed how Filipino people are, you know, engaged in the basketball. What else? The score were no the scores were noted by the organizers, partners, and friends. So it was it was looking for me, I was observing it at the beginning, as a very small and very family meeting. But for the organizers, however, it was an important first event. They, went, they even invited the consul. You can see the uh, photo on your right. And uh, the first person was the previous uh, Filipino consul who was in Poland. Uh, and the quote here also shows that the idea of the Filipino Basketball League in Poland was somehow transnational and was brought as a concept from the country of previous stay and employment by the organizers. So for example, Angelo told me that we organized this one because in our place in Dubai Mall, so you can see the mall, so the mall was the space where the basketball league appeared, uh, there was no like league. Uh, so then we thought, me and other organizers, that okay, we make an organization because we are too many Filipinos. Could you believe that we get all the restaurants in Dubai Mall? We get 20 teams, 20 teams composed like 15 players. Um, so how big this prestigious event? Our tournament, they held in World Trade Center in Dubai. Every Ramadan, all the people, they had some free time to play basketball. That's why this tournament is only in Ramadan. That's why we decided that because nobody in Poland, we need headway in this revolution. And what the last sentence was also quite interesting for me because he said, we needed it at least because the restaurant they already they, they have already. So also they realized that if they want to start some Filipino culture, or I don't know, some kind of Filipino communities initiated in Poland, they need to think about something different because the restaurant is already there. So the basketball league sounds uh, as a good idea. But as I said, the first event was very, very, very small. I will even remember when I was sitting uh, on it, and with other girls at the audience and we are eating puto puto because somebody prepared it. So it was very, very familiar moment. And what happened? So this small event turned into a intercity tournament, bringing together 10 teams from all over Poland, plus sponsors, supporters, brokers, employers, and artists within less than one year. So there is a photo after a few months, how many from these three teams previously for so many. Uh, and what was very, very interesting here was that the teams were mainly supported by the recruitment agencies. So for example, there were of course recruitment agencies, there were also employers. You can see the jersey which is supposed to show you from which part of Poland particular team comes from. Nevertheless, it's not really reflecting still the places which are like, for example, some of the agencies are a bit are on a bit different position when they show the map. But anyway, it's showing that it's a very, very broad event and it's all around. Uh, and the teams were, when I finally discovered it, they were the teams uh, prepared and organized by recruitment agencies, job placement agencies, companies uh, such as the mushroom picking company, or for example, the uh, owner of the first, there was even the uh, team organized but the first Filipino uh, store in Poland. So that was very interesting for me that the that in intermediaries are very active in this sphere. And during this meeting, this very, very big one, it has started since AM and finished around 9 p.m. as I remember. Uh, I could observe, for example, the live streaming, atom singing, opening ceremony which were provided by the consul. The first ball was thrown by the uh, Filipino ambassador. Uh, there were also there was also a concert. There was also a prayer led by the founder of the Filipino community in Warsaw, catering and a word giving ceremony. So the event was very 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 big. Among the audience, audience there were also other people interested in the basketball. Uh, so first of all, of course, there were still the many many relatives, but two Filipino commentators, muses, musicians, 
and other brokers and also embassy representatives, as I said. So I was also very curious how the promotion of the event has started. Uh, and uh, I asked one of the organizer about it and he told me that actually through Facebook groups, because there are, there were, there are many Facebook groups of Filipino community here. So we tried to post there and we had these organizers as well from admin for those groups. And they help us as well because they are also part of the committee. The promotion is also, promotion, promotion also is, is being done outside of Poland. So for example, you can see the poster about the new event and in April, there will be the first European basketball tournament in Poland. There will be, there are the teams which are supposed to come, but also the one of the team playing in the uh, Pinot Warsaw Basketball League a few months ago went to Italy to to play there, to win there, but also to promote their event. And going now to the brokers and employers and their objectives. So that was something which was actually the most important for me and which I tried to uh, connect with, with the basketball. So I'm using here sometimes brokers slash employers because in Poland, also the recruitment agency can act as an actual employer when it becomes the job placement agency. So especially manufacturing workers, they are signing in Poland the mandate contract and then their employer is agency. But agency can also still be the agency. So that's why I put here brokers and employers and their object. So I told you that during the first event, there were few polls. And I was quite surprised because it's not really common that I'm meeting other Polish people during uh, such a very community e event. Uh, so I asked them, are you friends? Did you come to support? And they told me that actually no, that they are recruiters and they are working with these workers. So of course, maybe they are friends and they support them a bit. But on the other hand, they also wanted to find new employees for their work, for their company. And um, there is, uh, here there's an information in Poland but what they are saying is, um, second, the agency is engaged in recruiting and hiring production workers, providing stability, timelines, and overnight access to employers. So that was the first recruitment agency team I encountered, first recruitment agency team I met. Uh, and I was also wondering why they really need this basketball team in their recruitment agency or in their companies. And then I realized that the suits, of course, they have logo of many recruitment agencies and companies. So for sure, this is also for promoting the particular employer or broker. This is also the way to publish photos on their social media accounts and sharing the information that we are already having this basketball team. But what is more, and probably the most important is that is the way to find a job. So for example, Edgar told me that I didn't have work for two months in Poland. So one friend also recommended me to play basketball. That time I met one of the organizers. He's the manager in the restaurant. So after that, he just we're just talking about life, what we are doing in here, do we have jobs and everything. And I told him that I don't have any job for like two months now and just feels bad for me or pity or something. So he just recommended me to, you know, try to work in this rest, you know, to start again. So I just started there. I'm working there for like a year now. And that was really the space for looking for employment because also I witnessing some recruiters were already trying to persuade Filipinos who were the audience during the first event to change the job and try luck in their companies. But also, is the huge space for employers and for brokers for sponsoring. So, uh, of course, as you can see there, always after all of events, there's an information who are the sponsors. Thank you to particular sponsors. They are usually mentioned for brokers and for employers because I also met them and talked them about this during the league. It's also it's also very important to to be listed there. Uh, there is the logo of the. Uh, Filipino store in Poznan. And I remember that they knew this logo somehow and I saw it somewhere else. And then I also realized that they have it on their jersey. So there was the team of this Filipino store in Poland. Uh, what else? So for example, not only recruitment agencies and not only brokers 
and not only uh, employers are engaging in, in promoting and in sponsorship, but also the independent companies. So for example, since few last uh, meetings, we can assert that the 18 kilo of rice, 18 kilo of rice back actually is the most precious award during any Filipino community meeting in Poland. Uh, and uh, this one, these one are um, sponsored by the first Balik Bayans shipping boxes company in Poland. So there are many, many, as you see, there are many interests, there are many uh, aims, and there are many actors. So appreciation. So certificate of appreciation is something I have only encountered in the Philippines. It can serve different functions, as I heard and as I learned from many of my interlocutors here. So it can increase prestige, it can provide a way to document performance, enables more social recognition and advance, advance abroad, which can be difficult for many OFWs already. And as the Filomeno Aguilar wrote, for many, becoming the middle class in the Philippines occurred by joining the global working class and degrading personal status abroad. So in this case, engagement in a Pinoy Warsaw Basketball League and getting this certificate of recognition, certificate of appreciation, can be a way of upgrading personal, personal social status also abroad. And I was wondering that maybe this is something which, which finally allowed them to, to be more recognizable or also feel better. Uh, yeah, and this is the certificate of appreciation, which many, many of my Filipino friends were posting after this one of events. So uh, it was mentioned before that for a year and a half, I was focused on YouTube and the uh, unofficial labor brokerage on YouTube provided by the Filipino bloggers in Poland. Um, so I was also checking any videos produced by recruitment agencies we try to attract to come to Poland and work there. So I, I don't have space to show you the whole uh, video and whole movie, but uh, the one was very interesting for me because it promotes the work at the Polish agriculture plant factory. And the main character, OFW, talks in superlatives about the job, the place where he lives, his co-workers, as well as his employer. Uh, I even remember that there was a sentence like, Polish people are very, very kind and always smiling. And the person on the in the movie is not really smiling, but anyway, that was the narration and, and tendency. Uh, the protagonist says, I like working here because of stable working conditions, high earnings, and more especially the openness of other people. And later on, we can hear, as we finish our work, we spend time together cooking or playing basketball. And for a few seconds, we can observe basketball facilities provided near the accommodation spot and other OFWs playing. So basketball can be also the important factor that can encourage people to come to Poland with help of particular agencies and to work for a particular employer. And that kind of movies were very, very uh, interesting for me, that kind of videos, because they have actually any kind of version. So there's also Ukrainian version where, for example, there is no basketball, but something more important for Ukrainians. And uh, I think there were also the other one, but I also remember that here the basketball was shown very, very clearly as an advantage of, of working for this particular agency. So brokers and employers can also have different objectives. So since few months, uh, the whole humanitarian overseas for Pinoys in Europe NGO appeared. And during the Christmas meeting, uh, during the Christmas Basketball League meeting in Warsaw, it was possible for OFWs who participated there uh, to consult their contracts, to ask about the particular issues, hope, promote themselves, saying that they are um, they have right to represent all of Pinoys Filipinos in Poland, not only workers, and they are doing it free of charge. But since the first meeting, you can get the free membership. So I, I need to discover it a bit more. What does it mean if you need a free membership, but on the other hand, they are free of charge. But also you can see the facilities here. It was just very interesting for me when the player, a bit sweaty after playing a match, immediately went there with the contract and tried to consult particular issues. But the most important actors, probably, despite the labor brokers, despite the, the recruiters, which I'm focused mostly, are migrants. And the league, I think, is a 
way is a space for various forms of engagement for Filipino migrants. So, for example, they are, of course, playing, but they're also watching, they are supporting. Uh, there are concerts, as I said, during the, uh, during the breaks. They're also commenting, they are live streaming. There are many, many ways. And most, what is most important, they are networking there. They also have their, uh, every team has their own Muse. And I think that for you is absolutely, you're absolutely aware what is it and who is Muse, etc. But for me, I was very, very surprised when I was asked to judge the best Muse. So uh, I got this list of, uh, you know, teams just after the names with these agencies or employers, companies. And then I supposed to judge uh, the confidence, the audience influence and, and everything. So that was something very, very new. And uh, yeah, and, and we can uh, we can read uh, on the Facebook official website of the event um, what they are saying about the, the muses. So for example, they said that uh, Earning the title of the best muse at the basketball event isn't just a label. It's a well-deserved reward for the woman who truly has a passion with basketball sport. I also checked the awards for the best muse. So the awards were sponsored by another recruitment agency. And they were the, there was a Red Rose and the Nike uh, shoes, Nike sneakers. And uh, as far as I heard, and as long as I'm here, Many people suggest me that maybe this is just the beginning of the beauty pageant which will appear around Filipino Basketball League in Poland soon. Um, so this is about the, the forms of engagement. Of course, basketball is a hobby. And of course, basketball is a source of uh, emotional support, in international support. So for example, Edgar said that if I have a bad day, I'm just using my sports like playing basketball just to forget everything. Most what I do is like to play basketball. Roberto said, because I desperately want to play basketball. I'm playing here. One of my friends, he told me that, oh, there is a leak in work. So his friend is building and creating a team. So maybe if you want to join, I said, okay, why not? I will spend all my time to go to Warsaw just to play basketball. And the issue was that he was working in a totally different part of Poland uh, for almost four hours by train from Warsaw. And even though every Sunday he was using the train to come to Warsaw to play with the team he used to really, really like. Uh, Edgar, when he was looking for a job also, uh, he was looking for a job outside of Poland. He asked me if I know any possibilities. And also the first question was, but is there a basketball league? Is there a possibility for me to play or any, for example, the team? Of course, this is a way to network. This is a way to be recognized. Uh, so for example, also the organizers and the attenders and the players later on when they are meeting during the other Filipino community celebrations or events they are spending time together they are wearing in a similar way uh, sometimes also they are serving during the different events so for example during the uh, 125th anniversary of in the, Philippine the Philippine independence, uh, many of them were obliged to, for example, raise the flag during the national anthem singing or the other important, uh, important uh, role. And the Christmas, uh, Christmas meeting of uh, PWB was also the space where basketball, volleyball, women basketball, volleyball appeared. So the Filipino Warsaw Basketball is also the space where the other sports initiatives and other events can appear later on. And in, uh, in yeah, 8th, 8th of March, uh, because it's the Women's Day, there will be the first Women Volleyball League in Warsaw. I don't know consisted of how many teams because they didn't uh, publish it so far, but that was the beginning and what is later on. And the last actors, so the embassy. So of course, embassy is very important important for organizers, appearing of a uh, consul or ambassador is very, is very, uh, very, very important because they are marking with their uh, presence the event. What else? Uh, they are also uh, conducting the uh, counseling and uh, supporting. So for example, also before there was no this whole NGO, you can ask your consul about particular issue connected with your legal stay, etc. 
uh, they are also uh, important as a starting point. So for example, Generoso and Angelo told me like, we had to register our community to be recognized. And we hope now that maybe in the future they will call us if they will need something or they will let us know it will be another band, which can, another team which can play uh, in our basketball, uh, Pinot Warsaw Basketball League. So of course, this is something which was needed for them, but this is also something for the embassy itself because they can promote them, they can promote this event on their social media. They can also say that they're engaged. There is the uh, official Facebook website which communi communicates. So as you can see, uh, the Philippines is the main proponent of the World Basketball Day resolution at the United Nations. Uh, the consul also added that the Filipinos' love of the game is bringing the community closer and connected wherever Filipinos are overseas. The Philippine Embassy also took the opportunity to make its service available by holding ATN consultation and overseas voting registration during the third commemoration. And uh, here, on the other hand, you could, for example, register yourself for a uh, voting election, which is supposed to be in the Philippines in 2025. So also similar situation, players after match slowly went there and most of them were registering their stem for voting, for overseas voting. And I would just check the time. Yeah, so I'm not the right person to tell you about the role of basketball in the Philippines. You are the expert and uh, that is something which was just quite interesting for me when I tried to be more inside the topic. Uh, so for example, as a commercial event, the basketball as a commercial uh, space was very, uh, very interesting for me. Uh, I read some papers of um, researchers who were focused basically on the role of basketball in the fields like uh, Abinales or um, Antiliao and also Bartolomeu. So uh, they mostly also said and mentioned that, that this is somehow the commercial, social, and culture phenomenon. Uh, this is the SMS I got after a few days of being in Manila uh, that I can actually, you know, uh, maybe I can have a promotion for NBA, um, for watching NBA League. And uh, what is else? <laughs> Basketball is a rite of passage to adulthood and even a promising future. Uh, because as you're probably definitely aware, this is also the way as somebody can be promoted. If you are getting a scholarship, you can represent your school team or your university team. Maybe it will be also easier for you in the other dimensions. And the last thing is the Palakasan and Palakasan system. So uh, that was something which caught my attention as Antiliao argued is that the relationship of the Palakasan system with the Palakasan as a sport. And as you know, the Palakasan system in the Philippines is a patronage system where one gains favor, promotion, or political support through social networks. Palakasan means concept of strength, so sport, as I said. And I think the old and the modern association of Palakasan system with the Palakasan is important because it emphasizes the social importance of sports. So the lacasse strength that emanates from as an individual is enhanced by the support provided by his network of relationships. And you can see also Gilda Filipinas, and uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think in in next uh, few days, in 22nd, we can uh, see the they will fight with the Hong Kong team, right? During the another uh, Asian game, Asian Cup, Asian Cup, I think. Yeah, okay, I, I need to check. Uh, but you are the expert. So there just, before I will conclude, I try to discover for my particular topic, what else is happening during the, during playing basketball within the Philippines. So I asked every person I met, every uh, taxi driver, every tricycle driver, every friend of friends, neighbor, people in the reception, in the hotel. So what I learned. Basketball is also gathering together. So for example, there are many barbecues organized after playing basketball. It's a way of celebrating. So for example, a friend of mine told me that his friend the last week organized the birthday party inside the basketball pitch. This is a space for doing other sports like volleyball, but also chess, which I, quite, well, I was quite surprised with the chess inside the basketball pitch. 
this is also a way to hold sort of business meetings with the employer and uh, my interlocutor told me the analogy that this is probably the analogy to playing golf together so it could be somehow watching game together or playing together could be somehow an official meeting business meeting and of course this is a space for gambling and for betting What can I say? People are playing. It doesn't matter what time is it. If it's early morning or this is a late afternoon, there are photo. Every day I try to take a photo of players around my place to stay. Uh, I realized that many reefs uh, they have a color na color of the national Philippine flag, and even the other part of uh, facilities they can have this color. So, for example, there is a floor. The first one I took inside the Intramuros. There was the old hall and there were, uh, there, there were players and they played basketball. And uh, the second one is somewhere in Eremita. And about the professionalization and the uh, official way of playing basketball. So uh, that was partly interesting for me when I discovered, when I was told that PWA uh, consists of Branches, teams, 12 teams, where the teams also of very, very famous and big companies like San Miguel or Smart or, for example, the um, Phoenix Petroleum Philippines. But nevertheless, still, if we compare it to the Polish situation, players there are decent, they are paid, and the league itself seems to be prestigious and professional competition. So to conclude, basketball could be anything else in terms of networking and integration. At that point, it's just the most, I mean, basketball in Poland, basketball in Poland. At that point, it's just the most accessible, professionalized, and popular Filipino initiative. But basketball itself plays a big role in the lives of many Filipinos and is associated with recalling homes. It is impossible to separate the social dimension of the migration infrastructure from the commercial one. So the example of Pinoy Warsaw basketball meetings are supposed to simultaneously serve different functions and provide different types of support to migrants, but also to other important actors of the, of the infrastructure, brokers, potential employers, representatives of diplomatic services. The regulatory humanitarian and technological dimensions of infrastructure are visible to lesser extent during events. Pinoy Warsaw basketball has become a new space for formal and informal intermediation using different intermediary practices for various infrastructure actors. So for brokers and employers, there is the space for promotion, sponsorship, attracting new employees, but also counseling. For migrants, this is a way to networking, getting a support, informational and emotional one, management of leisure time. And for diplomatic services, this is a promotion of Filipino culture, customs and services, and also counseling. But, and maybe this is the most important, the way Polish employers, brokers, use sporting events, basically the basketball league, however, differ from how it is used in the Philippines. For employers and brokers in Poland, it is more important to recruit Filipinos as a factory worker or tomato pickers when Filipinos, athletically talented players who can win, promote their companies and compete. Thank you for your attention. It was a bit longer, but I hope you are not fall asleep already. Thank you. That's a wonderful talk. And uh, actually, I thought it's it's too short. I didn't realize that uh, time was passing so fast. Yeah, because it was uh, it was very entertaining for me and uh, very interesting also. So I didn't really notice that uh, time was passing. And I, I'm sure that uh, people in the audience here and uh, online um, felt like that. And I'm also sure that we have quite a number of questions and, and comments um, from the audience here as well as online. So who wants to begin? Or maybe we don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, I think that mic should work.
Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for your talk. My name's Edward Joseph Ofilada. I teach here at the Department of Interdisciplinary Studies in Ateneo, but my master's degree is in history and one of my specializations is the history of sports. So I'm very interested in your talk. One of the like recurring overarching themes in the history of sports is the move from amateurism to professionalism. And I have two questions related to that. The first one is just, I don't think I picked up on it in the talk. How are the teams in the Pinoy Basketball League named? What are the team names? Are they named after the companies who sponsor them? Do they copy names of teams here? Like, are they regional? Are they named after the city where they're based? Like, I'll, I'll ask the second one once I've after this one. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I should mention that. Uh, so they have absolutely the names after the recruitment agencies or employers. So for example, we have like DIA, which is a actually Korean recruitment agencies, which are recruiting construction workers to Poland. We have uh, Produktong uh, Produkt Pinoy Sabahai Nikuya team. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, Guhovski team, which is a mushroom picker company. Oh, yeah, we have uh, HR Motives team, which is also the recruitment agency, but we have also two separated teams and I forgot to tell you about this. Mm -hmm. And there are team consists of independent players. Okay. And you can guess uh, what is um, uh, the, the one name is the uh, Warsaw Warriors. Mm -hmm. But you can guess what is the name of the team. The team consisted of the best players. Mm -hmm. All Stars, are they? Mm -hmm. I think there will be the league called All Stars, but no, no. Like that was interesting for me because the, the title, the, the, their name is Poland. And that it also for me shows how they are trying to promote their, you know, their, their teams. Like there, there's not the Filipino team. There is no historical team. The name is Poland. Mm -hmm. And even once I was asked to bring all of my friends to play against this team. Mm -hmm. And I was laughing a lot because I said, so what do that, sh what should I call now? Like Poland go home, you know, when you are supporting the, 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 the other team. <laughs> so for example, the Filipinos, the best Filipino players during the league consists create this Poland team, but for example, the foreigners, mostly Poles, uh, become a team called foreigners. Mm -hmm. Luan Tolihau found something very interesting, almost parallel about the Philippine situation, where if you've noticed, you had the slide of the Philippine Basketball Association team yeah. names. His historical research uncovered that they have their roots, the Philippine Basketball Association has its roots in an employees league. So it started out as employees from these different companies playing against each other. Then as the games became more competitive, they wanted to hire better players. And for them to incentivize these players to play for their team, they had to pay them. And what you see now is the end state where all the players are professional. All of them are paid because the games have gotten that competitive. So that's just my second question. At this point, how competitive are the games in the Polish Basketball League? Your talk shows that there's so much more going on than just the games themselves. But if they get more competitive, it's possible that something similar happens where they try to recruit guest players specifically because they're good at basketball. And like, you might see them starting to pay people to play basketball. Uh, there is a possibility. And I think maybe this is the next step. But so far, it has started in 2022. So it's not mm -hmm. very, very big even so far. And uh, this is also the main conclusion at that moment, that for these supporters, team supporters, more important is still the re workers' recruitment employees recruitment, not really the best professional players, but maybe it will change because among the Filipino community, they are feeling, they already can um, compare the teams between themselves and they are already awarding the best players during the league. Mm -hmm. So maybe one day they will consist the team 
of the best players from the previous edition. Maybe they will have enough support and enough sponsorship to pay the players. This is something which probably will happen, but so far, I don't know where it will go. So far, they're not paid for playing. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, no, I have no microphone. Other mic. Thanks, John. So we have a question from the Zoom room. Uh, Fira Mante is the Ponce. I should I should wear my glasses. Uh, can you please unmute yourself and ask the question? To our hey, um, good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. Um, can you hear me? Um, I'm, I'm part of the Zoom audience. Uh, I can hear you, but I'm I not sure. Write the it in the chat box. So if you can write chat box. Yeah, it seems we don't have uh, audio. So, uh, if you oh. could kindly write your question into the chat box. Oh sure. But I wanted also to add something to the to the Edgar last question that uh, the way of support instead of paying for me at least now for example is the transport of workers so if there are already the teams consist of players from totally different parts of Poland really far they have the the, the Sponsor of the team organized the bus, for example, which brings the team to Warsaw, to the capital city where the, the league uh, so far uh, has been. And uh, interesting is that sometimes it's also the way to pick up new employees who are already came to Poland to work. So, for example, I'm organizing the bus because I want to bring you there, but also I'm organizing the bus because I want to bring in the same moment other workers who are already there. But this is important for Filipinos, as far as I know, to have this chance with the organized transport go to Warsaw, maybe stay some, maybe sometimes they can stay even longer so they can size a bit and traveling around. And the league is the, always on Sunday, maybe. So also this is the free day. Okay, so we have a, uh, another question from uh, the online audience from Mick Paris, and I think he's asking how how popular is basketball in Poland? That would have been my question also, not, <laughs> not knowing much about basketball in Europe. <laughs> the truth is, um, I, I need to protect myself if somebody will, after all, tell me that I, I don't know anything about the basketball. But as far as I'm observing, it's not such important, such popular like football, like volleyball, like a handball so of course it is and me when i was in high school i used to play in the regional basketball team for women but it's not very very popular if, if you are definitely not something like in the philippines in poland football even though we are not very good in football but this is something which we really support which is very commercial all of the advertisements uh, all of the big players are the footballer players football players yeah, that's yeah, what it's, I it's would have. Popular. Uh, it's not very po uh, popular and it's quite difficult even to create a team consist of Polish who would like to compete with the Filipino one. Because very often I, I was asked by my friends, can you bring some Poles? Maybe they can play with us. Once I managed to do that and the funny thing was also that the team, Filipino team, which was prepared for playing with this my Paul's friends were the team of the best player, the best, the best player for other league. But it's not super popular as far as I know, as I, as far as I'm observing. Uh, okay, so I I, I guess um, the recruiters you you mentioned earlier they they are not necessarily from Polish uh, basketball teams Absolutely. looking for Filipino players. No, 
No, no, this is the, the main difference. Mm -hmm. They're not really looking so far good players, but rather good employees. Uh -huh. So there's still also, that's that's another avenue, uh, the developing uh, Polish basketball. <laughs> maybe, maybe. As uh, you know, also, thanks Filipinos, the Polish Catholic Church is more full now. I, I encountered some priests who told me that thanks to Filipinos, the masses are already full during Sunday because Poles sometimes are outside of the church, especially the young generation. So maybe with the basketball will be the same. They will start something which now will become a Polish tradition or I don't know. Thanks. Um, yes, we have a question from the one side. Yes. Hello, so good afternoon. So I'm Sharius. Um, I'm from third year AB Political Science. I'm also minor in development. I was able to meet Miss um, Helena last um, Monday. So yeah, um, I think my my question I for for context, I'm a big basketball fan. So I, I always watch UAP and PBA. So <laughs> This 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 topic really interests me a lot. So um, my question really revolves on um, you you mentioned a while ago that basketball is not that much popular in in Poland, and um, there's also a small number of population of Philippines there. So my question really is, why do I, I'm curious why do recruitment recruitment agency choose or sort of decide to use basketball as a means for recruitment? And not other sports like let's say for example football, which are actually more popular in in Poland. So is there something about basketball that actually um sort of entice Filipinos to to, to get to to gather together? And so these recruitment agencies take that as an opportunity to recruit employees. So yeah. Thank you very much for that question. Um, yeah. Because at the beginning, I thought that basketball is just the new element of emerge Filipino community in Poland. So we have already the Filipino shops, Filipino restaurants, and now the basketball league, and also the volleyball women league is already prepared. But this is something more in the basketball. So maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think, and also I remember the talk with one of the organizers that for Organizers were also important. Were also was also important to connect all of the Filipinos together, because, for example, not everybody have to be Catholic, and probably you would never meet, met that person in a church. So basketball is something beyond the boundaries, and which can connect Filipino community. But with the recruiters, with the brokers, with the employers, I think that they discovered this sphere as a very very good uh, space for promoting themselves and on the other hand that's why also i try to show that this commercial dimension of migration attraction and the social one they are very very connected it's impossible to separate them because for a filipino migrant workers and for filipino migrant players they need support they need promote they need uh, also sponsors so we need sponsors Recruiters, why not? They are sponsors anyway. They want to promote us. Sponsors, we need workers. We will try to promote more the basketball since it's important for you. So I think it's, uh, you know, it, it was just like the, the decision. Somebody discovered that maybe this is a good way and then the other actor also discovered that this is a good space for their interest. It, it happened really simultaneously because as I said, during the first event, there was a Two teams consisted of, you know, like people who just came and they want to play. Friends of friends and friends and family members. And then one team of the recruitment agents. And also I tried to ask uh, many people here, especially CAR, if there are any teams of recruitment, professional teams of recruitment agencies within the Philippines. And I heard that not so far. So that was also the difference I, I realized. Yeah, thank you very much. And now we have uh, a question from uh, Flora Mante, I think. Uh, Hi, can you hear me now? Hi. Ah, okay, um, can, okay, now we... Uh, you can hear me now. Hello? Uh, 
we 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 can't hear you on. on okay, oh, okay. now it's not better. Yes. Can you hear me? We... Hello. Hi. Can you hear me, Olga? Yes. <laughs> Finally. So yeah. Don't, don't. So my name is um, Dr. Floramante Estrepons. I am a postdoc um, fellow at the Universite Libre de Brussel and also an associate at the Max Planck Institute um, for Social Anthropology. So I have, I think, three points. So a question and two suggestions, you know. So my first suggestion is Olga. You know, in the Philippines, we have three B, three big sports, so three B. So um, in popular media, they always um, highlighted that. So Filipinos, they love basketball boxing because of Manny Pacquiao and beauty pageants. And when I while I'm while I was listening to your um to your presentation, I remember the paper of His Young Wu. Um she's um a Hong Kong scholar who wrote a lot of things about this beauty pageants, you know, in Hong Kong among Filipino domestic helpers. So it is their way of like basketball, you know, in Poland, it is their way of somehow like pun punctuating the everyday repetitive life as migrant workers in the in the in, in Hong Kong. So maybe you can um see some similarities with that, you know, like try to to search for her work. The second one, I mean um, most of the questions that I heard revolve around basketball and you know they didn't really like um ask um on uh on the issues of migration. So like um here Olga, I mean I would like to learn more how do the migrant workers in in Poland, um, especially those you interviewed, how do they view the informal recruitment? You know, in this in these spaces, do they find them more trustworthy than the formal uh, recruitment networks? Also, I mean, with the use of um the notion of migration infrastructure, I am not really convinced that it suits your analysis here, because first, when we talk about infrastructure. It should have this the notion of distribution, you know, the circulation. And I don't really see much circulation here. And I think even if you don't use migration infrastructure or social infrastructure, as Biao put it, I mean, the notion of social networks, the notion of social ties, and the notion of social capital, you know, you know how social capital, how social networks and social ties um, work in these spaces. I think that is enough as a concept rather than using migration infrastructure. I would like to hear your 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 comments about it. But thank you very much, Olga. Your your presentation is amazing. Thank you. I didn't I, I was close to this. Thank you very much. Uh, so Mr. Permante is already my friend and I usually get the best comments from him. So I remember when I was really focused on the uh Granovetter uh, theory of a uh, a uh, strange of the social ties and the uh, strength of weak ties, sorry. And then he told me like, maybe it's absolutely not relevant to your work. And actually that was a very good comment. So thanks again. So first of all, yes, I even uh, remember when I saw the, uh, the movie Sunday Beauty Queen, which also shows this uh, way how important for uh, Filipino migrants in Hong Kong these beauty pageants are. And they are somehow recalling home and they are something, as you already said, basketball, boxing, beauty pageant, something which is really important for the community. So uh, as staring on your question, this is the first part of the work. Now I would like to start the more deep interviews and ask about how my interlocutors, the organizers, their supporters, players, how they are, um, what is an informal, the informal brokerage for them? and uh, if it's important or not and uh, somehow so far i think that they are not considered this what is happening during the pinoy warsaw basketball league as an informal labor brokerage because they are not also really thinking that for example promoting the team mm -hmm. or using the logo of a recruitment agency on your jersey is somehow i don't know promoting and this is the way of unofficial i can say unofficial recruitment I don't really think that for them it's something which is bad or which is wrong. This is also something which I'm learning here during my stay in the Philippines, that we shouldn't probably judge the different way of recruitment. And uh, for anybody, a legal way of recruiting can be something, something else. Um, 
the concept of migration infrastructure. Maybe you're right. Like this is the concept which I'm using usually in my main scientific work, but the concept of social ties probably here is much more important. Also the dimension of brokerage and the ways of brokering, which is uh, really straightforward or which is not, it's very important. Uh, what else? I think I already, I don't know. Let me know if you are satisfied or you want to or add something. Yeah, I mean, like, um, the second question that how do they view it? I mean, it's not really about the normative question. Is it something bad or or good? You know, for my question is about like, do they find it more convenient to to be with this with these people, or you know, it's about convenience and comfort, or you know, like, it's much better to to go in the you know in the formal processes because there is more safety in it. I do not know. I mean, like, I would like to learn more mm -hmm. from you. You know. Uh, I think they already consider it as a more safer way because they can also meet their workers of this NGO, workers of embassy. So mm -hmm. recruitment agency uh, acting in an unofficial way or bad way, they will never appear during the league because the Filipino embassy is already there. So I think mm -hmm. also more convenient because in the same moment they can do something they really love, they can play basketball. On the other hand, they can also have this, they also have this way uh, to engage sponsors and also have a way to, uh, you know, check particular agencies. This is actually a very good way for uh, Filipino players to know more about different agencies around the world, to know more about the different yeah. workplaces, more about the employers. They can chat, they can mm -hmm. So I think this is convenient for them. But this is something I want to mm -hmm. hold now in my questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. <laughs> because I started with observation. And that was something which wasn't my main interest at the beginning. Okay. We uh, have... Um... Another, actually, we have two questions from uh, Roy Irwin de la Cruz, and maybe we can, can we unmute? Yeah. Hi, um, do you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, um, I was really glad to know of this uh, talk. Um, I just knew it this morning. Um, from my sister who works, uh, who uh, teaches at the Department of Political Science there, um, Emil de la Cruz. Um, so let me introduce myself. My name is Roy. Um, I am an OFW here in Berlin. And this is this talk is interesting to me because I am part of the UP Alumni Association here in Germany. And recently, we also held our own Filipino basketball tournament. Um, February last week, uh, February ten. So this is a very a very timely talk, uh, for us. Um, and I guess um, I want to focus my questions on basically the differences that I observe here, um, with the Filipino basketball community here in Germany, and what I've learned from your talk is that um, so what I what I noticed that um, I never really um. Uh, knew of the concept of basically recruitment or uh, recruiting workers in this this Filipino um, basketball tournament. So I guess my first question is like, uh, what are the labor areas in Poland that are in need of workers? Um, so the context of that is that uh, most of the participants in our um, basketball tournament were full-time workers. Um, so most, I think, were nurses. A lot of the majority were nurses. And also some in the IT sector, which is uh, growing here uh, in Berlin. So, and then second question is that um, the Philippine uh, tour uh, basketball tournament that we held um, took some time uh, to organize. Uh, one of the major um, hurdles that we uh, encountered was basically finding a venue because um, gyms here in Germany. Um, or at least here in Berlin, I, I can say in Germany, um, are assigned to 
certain sports associations or clubs. Um, there is basically the difference in, like, for example, in the Philippines, where it's easy to rent a gym, a private gym, to hold a tournament. Here, you here we had to partner with a sports club in Berlin to hold this tournament uh, because they had ownership of the gym and they don't. It's not uh, something that you can just rent. So yeah, those are my two questions. Okay, thank you very much and. I'm really happy that we can compare it. I also try to compare the, the basketball league in Poland with a Hungarian, but there is actually no uh, Hungarian league yet. So I, I never thought that major Germany is a good direction. Uh, so so the areas where the workers can be recruited. Mm, I would say Facebook. And then I would say Facebook and Facebook and maybe YouTube, but also of course, these initiatives, those course, the community meetings. So for example, there is much more Filipino community meetings since three years. There are Filipino potlucks, uh, summer potlucks held by different uh, Filipino communities around Poland. There are the, this way we can now, we, we can, uh, this lang Filipino language uh, celebrity last year and many, many others. But I think the most important recruitment part takes place in the online sphere. In, it, it's online and uh, what I also observed when I was telling you re recording you the story about the trials of persuade the one girl from audience to work in a different agency there is something which I usually heard from Polish employers that the recruitment agencies in Poland now they are trying to still work around so for example they are spreading the news that in their workplace is much better and maybe uh, OFW is supposed to consider changing a, a profession. Uh, uh, sorry, um, sorry, Olga, I um, didn't want to cut you off, but um, my question was basically, like, what are the industries in Poland that need migrant workers? Um, just... Yeah, not not how um, the recruitment is done. Uh, manufacturing work, agriculture work, uh, what else? Agriculture, agriculture and manufacturing. So the fruits and vegetable picking, uh, but there is also there are also just recruitment agencies teams. So there are the recruit re outsourcing agencies to different kind of professions. But there are also there is also the team of a construction um, construction uh, a construction company in Poland, which is supposed to build the refinery. So very very big Polish national project now. Um, so I think that will that that the main industries. So manufacturing work, uh, mushroom and vegetable picking, so agriculture work and, and just uh, pure recruitment agencies. Uh, so I want to be now sure. The second question was about the, the gym uh, accessibility or yeah, okay. So that is also, thank you very much for that question because the gyms, used by the Pinoy Warsaw Basketball League in Poland are using the school gyms. But nevertheless, they're supposed to pay for them since the tournament takes place on Sunday. So the free day. So they need money for this. And uh, I remember one story when the, the one of the one of the organizers told me that uh, probably it's too uh, too late before Christmas that they decided that they will organize one of the meetings but they already paid huge money for renting the space. So actually they anyway need to organize this uh, Pinot Warsaw Basketball meeting because they need to bring the sponsors and probably, I don't know, take money from somewhere, at least not losing their money which they already paid for the, the, for the place. So uh, I think the accessibility is quite big still, but it's not very cheap. I don't know how it's in Germany. You need to also pay for, you know, for, for the space. Yeah, so it's, um so, um, the sports club that we partner with is a private sports club. Um, but uh, a good point that you brought up is, yes, um, we are using school gyms mostly uh, for playing basketball games. And um, these gyms are assigned by the government to the, to, uh, the sports clubs. Um, so it's not, like I said, it's not, a, it's not as easy to, to coordinate or to just you know uh, pay them a fee because that option is not um, available in the first place. So with this uh, private sports club that we partnered with, 
um, it basically we had to negotiate um, that the event um, had their name on it as well. So it was also publicized as their event that they core organized as well. So for it to happen. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the Sunday means here a lot because Sunday is a free day. So there is no children, no pupils. So they can use the space. Nobody else using the space but they're supposed to pay for that. And that is also why they need sponsors and that is also why they need recruitment agencies. So it's quite combined, but uh, I don't know if in Germany it's also during the Sundays or other days, but this is something probably which helps if there will be the problem with the space. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Olga, uh, for answering my questions. Yeah, thanks, Roy, and greetings to Berlin. <laughs> thanks to Berlin. So we have um, one question here from the audience. Okay, so um, I'll do it quick because I don't know there is still something online. Uh, so my name is Helena Patzer. I'm uh, uh, an anthropologist from the University of Warsaw as well. We do work together with Olga, so I know a bit about her research, so I won't make it long, but just maybe following a bit on Flora Mante's question, actually, I would like to ask you, what would you think this brings to Filipino workers in Poland? Because maybe that was not fully clear because this was a very short presentation, the Filipinos in Poland are all already employed. You cannot go, um, you cannot go to Poland if you are not working, if you don't have a work permit, and you are already working. So, is this kind of informal way of getting knowledge from different agencies, and maybe a way of changing your work? And is it an opportunity, or is it also tricking people because the, these are the both different sides of recruitment so would you say that it does provide some options some opportunities once they're already there and once they have paid the 150,000 pesos or 200,000 pesos sometimes a bit less if they go from uh, a second country like a th third country so what would you say at this moment like does it provide an opportunity take, uh, taking into account what the situation is and this is quite difficult and they already have paid a lot so so it's also not first recruitment. So that's for me. And I don't know if you want to um, give him back the microphone to or, off online or to Olga. Thank you very much, Helena, especially for listening uh, to me yesterday at 2 a.m. when I was uh, re repeating my speech. So uh, I have an idea. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I think as long the knowledge is spread by other migrants, other Filipino migrants who are playing, not from the recruiters, it's maybe more safer. Because so far, of course, as I was showing before, the migrants also can be the brokers who are hustles and who would like to use their current situation to use other migrants. Nevertheless, it's rather rare. And I think, and what I'm observing, Filipinos player trust more when they are listening about the different companies, different uh, recruiters from other Filipinos. So I think for that, the space is very useful. Uh, with the agencies, of course, they are realizing their interests, their aims. You never probably know if they will tell in the whole truth, if they just need more workers. But maybe we should follow the Filipino community. If they decided on that, if they organized it, if they are publishing about it online, they are inviting embassy and they are inviting many, many. Maybe this is already a pre-checked. Maybe they decided to cooperate only with the uh, recruitment agencies, which are or which are legit. This is something I supposed to discover now. Thank you very much for that uh, for that comment. But I think that the knowledge spread between other co-patriots, it's maybe more safer than when it's just a pure recruiter. Okay, thanks. We have now um, a question from Andrew Laxina. Uh, sorry, Andrew, for keeping you waiting. <laughs> uh, no, no worries. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Olga, for your uh, presentation. And also, uh, I would like to say hi to Dr. Ponce uh, for... Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity last time in PUP to have the webinar. And Olga, I just want to share with you that we also have a basketball tournament of Filipinos here in Budapest. 
By the way, I'm a master of student of sociology at the Corvinus University of Budapest. And just recently, uh, we the one of the Philippine organizations here conducted a uh, tournament and they have at least 17 teams and 10 players each team. So they regularly do it annually. And um, my and actually the, the basketball tournament here in Budapest is also served as a venue for uh, for students to have their part-time work because some of the students applied for us score sheets or study sheets or something like that or as organizers. And at the same time, the basketball tournament here serves as a way to express their concerns, especially if you are working outside of Budapest, like, for example, you're working in Debrecen and it's like a venue to, to voice out your concern or if you have any uh, employment opportunity as well. Because here in Hungary, uh, overseas Filipino workers have at least two years in contract and they have to uh, find work elsewhere. But uh, recently, the, the Hungarian government has a new law. They call it as two plus one. So a maximum of three years uh, working stay here in, in Hungary. And I'm just curious, uh, what is the case in Poland? So usually, how many years uh, workers are given the uh, working permit? Because here in Hungary, uh, Filipinos have this kind of uh, stepwise migration. So upon their arrival in Hungary, they are thinking of going to Germany or going to Poland. So they just stay here for a year. And then after that, they will uh, stepwise or they will uh, find another opportunity elsewhere. So mm -hmm. it's very rare for Filipinos to stay here at least uh, four or five years unless they have married to a Hungarian or they are working in a white collar uh, sector or professional job. But for the service sectors, especially working in the factory, uh, they have this kind of fear that after two years, they have to find work again. So I'm just curious about it, uh, Olga. What is the case in Poland? So do they have the same experience of like two-year contract or less? Or I'm just curious because maybe the Filipinos in Poland are participating in this basketball tournament because maybe they have this like stepwise migration also. But just my... Uh, my uh my my guess on on that note. Thank you so much, Olga. Thank you very much, Andrew. So as you probably noticed, we are all connected here somehow, and we know each other. Uh, yeah, because uh, I'm sorry, probably I forgot about it when we had a talk with Andrew like a month ago, maybe, and we tried to compare the Filipino community in Hungary and in Poland. I forget about that. There is already a Pino League. And which is even bigger, as you mentioned, 17 teams. But about your question, how many uh, years, uh, how many, for how many years Filipino migrant workers in Poland usually keep their work permit? It depends. It depends, as you already said, if it's an intercompany inter transfer, they are staying as long as the company decided to branch an office in, in Poland. If it's, for example, uh, work in a manufactory, which is currently the most popular among the OFWs, it can also take more than two years because sometimes they are just changing the work, not to work outside Poland, but within Poland, but for different employers. So, for example, you can obtain a temporary residence card, mostly what I learned, for example, for three years. But then if you are still working for a particular employer, you are applying again. And then it depends absolutely for our, from our office for foreigners. Sometimes there is one year, sometimes there is six years, uh, six months. Sometimes it is three years. Most often three years. Uh, of course, there is an idea to going migrate somewhere outside Poland to other Schengen country after the particular contact is, contract is finished. But I started my survey, my research three years ago, three years and a half. And so far, all of my interlocutors stay in Poland and nobody migrates. So I think maybe I need to observe it, you know, for next 10 years, probably. Maybe they will stay and maybe they will just change the professions. It's not very easy because it's constant work to, you know, about legalize your stay, finding the employer, the work permit. It's as also Helena said, it's a key. It's key. Like in the past, you could also come to Poland on a tourist visa. And then being already in Poland, switch to the Schengen visa, to the working visa. Now it's impossible. You need to go outside. Uh, you, you even shouldn't be brought on a tourist visa. 
but we have, I'm not observing, Helena is also observing Filipino community in Poland since many years. I'm not meeting many Filipino students. So this is the difference definitely between Poland and Hungary. Like, as you said, students, they can come after some years, they're supposed to find work. And I remember also, this is usually the assist, the English teacher work, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is something which I'm not really observing in Poland. I, I didn't meet many students. Yeah. And uh, also the situation you said, if there is a Polish husband, Polish wife, then it's much, much, much easier, of course. And there are already couples, Filipino Polish couples. Yeah, so I, I think maybe I, I answer your question. It depends, uh, but you can still looking for different employers within Poland. And I know some factory workers who are there already more than 10 years. They are just constantly applying for new uh, resident status. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I think we have time for one last uh, question. And that would be, I guess, a follow-up uh, question from Flora Mante. Hi, Olga. I'm really like, um, I think Helena and I, we have similar view, you know, we share similar view um, concerning on, you need to, concerning on how you should um, clarify, you know, like the recruiters in the basketball area. Are they recruiting, you know, are they recruiting you to a new job or are they recruiting you to another place? By place, I mean from rural Poland to urban Poland or to another country. And it is connected with the stepwise migration um, comment, you know. Um, I think um, this is really popular in among highly skilled migrants, you know, the the way how they they move to much better or much progressive country. You know, because high skilled migrants they have more capital, social, economic to to pursue stepwise migration. But um, I think um, if I remember it right, you know, like among your interviews, you know, based on your last presentation, they're not really like um, you know, like they're not really like all doing this stepwise migration because some of your interlocutors, if I remember it correctly, they already went to Germany, they already went to to some first world country, but they decided to stay in Poland. And that's my question. I mean, why did they choose Poland over, you know, other progressive countries like Germany or the UK or the US? You know, what 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 are the factors that influence they, them to stay in Poland? You know? So I would like to hear more about these things because this is something special about your study if you will like present it rather than presenting the, the stepwise migration. It is already like um dominating um the migrant study, you know. But this one, if you can what what makes Poland interesting among them, it is something like haven't explored in the literature. So I would like to hear more about these things, um Olga. Thank you. Thank you. So uh yeah, most of my interlocutors staying in Poland. And the most often answer I got is because of the cheaper cost of living. So for example, if they compare Pol life in Poland to Germany, in Poland, life is cheaper. Even they are earning less, the life is cheaper, the expenses are cheaper, food is cheaper, we don't have steel euro, we have uh, Polish zloty, this is our currency. So this is one of the example. Uh, the other one is a sense of freedom. And the sense of freedom is usually associated, associated with the Catholic religion. So in Poland, as a very, very Catholic country, more than 71% 71, 71 of Catholic people, they have more ways to you know, go to the church, uh, spend the time they would really like, celebrating Free Sunday. This is also a common answer I'm getting. And uh, that is, I think, all if you compare Poland to more, uh, I don't know, the better countries, like, like Germany, like, like the countries of Western Europe. So the cost of living and the sense of freedom, the sense of the sense of community, the sense of culture, closeness with the other Catholics. But this is also something which they are thinking it is, but behind there's also their personal situation. So as maybe you remember from my previous presentation, and as I mentioned before, they are usually manufacturing worker. They don't have a 
capital to really change their work and migrate from Poland to Germany. Usually they decided to stay in Poland and that's why the Polish recruiters are really active. Polish employers are really active during the Pinot Warsaw Basketball League because they just want to, you know, get these employers for different companies. But it's not really possible for many OFWs in Poland who are working as a factory worker to migrate to Germany or Netherlands or Denmark. But the cost of living issue was quite often mentioned. That, for example, we already stay a few months in Germany, but when we realize that the uh, rice is much more expensive, for example. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olga, for your wonderful talk. And thanks to the audience here on site and uh, online. And for, for a lively discussion, I really enjoyed it very much. So it's really great to end a very productive day. And thanks again for coming and for joining uh, our little seminar here. Thank you and have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you very much for staying here so long. Thank you very much. And for all of the comments and for all of the questions, as I said, I'm at the beginning, so I really want to dip it. So all of them are very useful. I have two pages. Thank you. <laughs>